Hey guys, Chelsea Phillips here. We're going to Stammer 11 DVD update. We're talking about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last two weeks or so. Like I always say, guys, if you enjoy these updates, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Leave me comments below what you guys saw the titles I checked out this month. Any titles coming up that you guys would like me to review for future updates and some of the things you guys have checked out recently. Now, the first one I got from Shout Factory, Scream Factory line. This is a movie I always remember as a kid. I used to watch the... Um, Elvira, one of this. I had like I, as a little kid, I always remember having that Elvira tape of this movie. You know, in this movie is the brain that wouldn't die. But then they also did, and they actually have this on the Blu-ray, the Mystery Science, the you know, Theater 3000 version of the movie when the you know the characters go and watch Mystery Science, you know, from the Mystery Science Theater, go and watch the brain that wouldn't die, and then you know riff on the movie and all that kind of stuff. The thing is though, the brain that wouldn't die is actually because you know some of those kind of movies were like that they riff on. It's one of those things where, like with Manos, The Hand of Fate, it's really hard to watch the movie without that going on or without kind of jokes about it and things like that. The Brain That Wouldn't Die is actually a really, really cool movie and very ahead of its time. And some really cool, like quotable lines. This is also the movie that definitely inspired, at least I think, Tim Burton with Mars Attacks with the scenes of the heads on the dogs and stuff like that. But the movie's basically about this uh, doctor who is, you know, trying to do transplants and has the idea of being able, if someone has a messed up arm or loses their arm that he can transplant another arm you know and he's doing all kinds of weird experiments and stuff like that and this is before this stuff is going on and before it's accepted and things like that and he basically is building this weird creature in his house but what happens the one day he's going to his you know cabin you know he has out in the middle of the desert kind of woods type area and he's driving out there with his girlfriend end up getting into a ter terrible car accident and her head ends up getting cut off and she dies but he ends up basically finding out a way to keep the, her head alive and he goes and basically is trying to go around and find a body to transplant her head onto and it's him kind of on the encounters of like trying to meet women and figuring out who would be the perfect body if you watch like Bride or Reanimator that was definitely inspired by this movie at least I feel like it was same with Frankenhooker as well this is like I said this is a very ahead of its time movie and the transfer on this is a brand a new transfer this and really outstanding transfer this movie like it's one of those movies you never would thought would think would look this amazing it has on here too like i said the mystery science theater you know segment as well you know the whole movie when they go and watch the film it has on here an alternate scene which was actually like a scene that they filmed for the international versions it had some nudity in it and it has on here a new commentary track with film historian but this is just a really really cool one that i really love this one like i said i hadn't watched this one in probably like over 10 years or so a really long time the last time i saw it I think was a Mystery Science Theater one, and, and like I said though, this really holds up, you can watch this as it is, as a movie, like I said, with things like Manos, Hand of Fate, and things like that, it's not really that, it's hard to watch it without the riffing and the spoofing going on, this one actually works really well as a, as a movie on its own as well, the next one, this movie is basically Jaws with a car in the desert, and that's essentially how, how they pitched the movie when they made this movie, and it's called The Car, and it's one I had never seen before. I don't know how I had never seen this movie before. You know, it stars uh, James Brolin. It's basically about this car that's going around desert, and like the beginning of the movie, there's this one, the, the coolest scene in the movie that I love is this hitchhiker character. He's only in the movie for a little bit, but like his like scenes in this were amazing. It's just these weird lines that he was saying. He kind of felt a little bit out of place in the movie just because he was kind of hamming it up a little bit, almost like the Three Stooges or something, just the way he was acting, but like I love those, that, the scene with him in the movie. But it's basically, though, about this town that's getting terrorized by a car during the middle of, like, summer festivities. And they're kind of, the car is, like, driving through when they're having, like, this kid's parade that they're putting on, you know, the school thing. And it's basically just causing all this kind of havoc and killing the people, running them over, running them off the road. It's James Rowland as a cop trying to figure out who this car is and you know, what it is and who's behind the car and everything like that. That's essentially what it is. Like I said, it's basically just like Jaws, but with this car, you know, in the, in the desert. But it's a really cool, fun movie. And like I said, there's just some really fun sequences in this, especially that, that, that hitchhiker scene. It was amazing. It has on here, though, new interviews with director Elliot Stevenson and the actors, um, theatrical trailer, radio spots, another, you know, one with a really good transfer. But if you like, you know, like, Duel, movies like Duel, um... And I guess I would say Christine and things like that. This is definitely one to check out. Like I said, I feel like not a lot of people have seen this one, but a really, really cool one. Like I said, the car movie, you know, Jaws, but with a car. The next one, this is one 
it was out of print for a long time. And I always remember, like, when I was doing out of print movie hunting videos, I was always trying to find the DVD of this. And I had never seen this movie before. And this was actually probably one of my favorite anthology movies that I've seen, um, at least for a lesser known one. And with some really, really good segments on this. And this is called Nightmares. Yeah, uh, is this year's sleepover. The movie's called Nightmares. The movie was basically made as a TV pilot, and then it was kind of too intense for TV. The TV basically passed on it, and then they ended up... Because originally there was kind of people thought there was actually episodes of this TV show, which I don't think is even on DVD or anything, but I think people used to think that that's what it was. There were actually episodes from this TV show, this anthology show, that they didn't end up airing, but it actually was a totally different thing. So I think one episode was written for that or something, but it was actually made for this pilot series that didn't get picked up, and then they kind of added some gore to it, you know, to kind of make it R-rated to release it in theaters. But the, there's a bunch of different anthologies, you know, segments in this. The one is the, the actress who was from the movie The Sentinel, and she's basically, you know, addicted to cigarettes, and she ends up wanting to go out, to, you know, to get cigarettes in the middle of the night, and she ends up hearing on the news right before that there's this crazy madman that broke out of the nut house that's going around killing people. She doesn't care. She just thinks she's going to be fine going out and getting the cigarettes, and it's basically what ends up happening to her. Um, the one with Emilio Estevez is really cool, and I read, too, like, like it almost bankrupt the movie, you know, doing these effects in this scene, because it was an amazing scene of him going this, you know, going to the arcade all the time, and basically going there and just becoming addicted to the arcade, and was always there trying to beat this one game and the game basically ends up kind of taking over his life and what ends up happening to him the kid in this who he plays his friend is the kid who was from uh one of my favorite movies just one of the just one of the guys i always mix it up with the cory uh hay movie but just one of the guys and he's you know the brother who always goes all balls itch it's a fact that guy I and mean, he was in this movie i was like really happy to see him and this was one i was always a fan of that kid he was also in bloody birthday uh, the other one was a priest that goes out into the basically ends up quits being a priest and like loses his faith and what ends up happening to him and there's like a car segment in this one kind of like the car and the other one um, was about a gigantic rat in the house and the guy from that is the guy who was in the movie It and he played and he was in um, the dad or one of the, I think the brother in um, you know. My Girl 2. He was a bunch of different movies. And basically, though, they're in this house and there's these giant rats and the, the husband wants to kind of do it himself and he doesn't want to pay for the exterminators. But this is a really, really cool anthology. Like I said, I love this anthology. It has on here, though, you can watch it in full screen or widescreen because, you know, I think it was shot in full screen, but they matted it for widescreen. It looks fine to me on widescreen. Good transfer. This is a new commentary track as well, you know, with the actors from The Sentinel. But I love this movie. Now, and the next one from Scream Factory as well is a double pack, which has the Dungeon Master and the Eliminators. The main one I'm going to talk about in here is Dungeon Masters. Eliminators was cool. It's basically, though, about this, you know, half-man, half, you know, robot creature that goes to kind of, you know, kill off his creator for making him the way he is. It's kind of like a RoboCop-type movie, but I really, really like the Dungeon Master movie. Somehow I had never seen this movie before in my life. I don't know how I didn't. It's got, you know, the uncut version of the movie that has, like, it's an extended opening, a couple different extended things to this. But it's basically about this guy who's, like, a computer programmer who's, like, really good with computers and things like that. And this Dungeon Master, played by Richard Mole, who I was, we got to work with him a while back on the movie Ghost Shark. And he's, like, the star of this movie playing the Dungeon Master. And he's basically, though, basically ducks the guy's girlfriend, takes her into the world, and makes the computer programmer play these games that he's created, the Dungeon Master's challenges. And basically the prize is if he wins, he gets to leave with his girlfriend. And he, it's kind of a, kind of an anthology movie, sort of, because... All the games that he gets into, like the different type of segments, like one is like the like a wasp music video. One of them is um, like a Goblin Land. One of them is like a horror movie. It's all these different types of segments he ends up going into, and it's all different directors directing this like the segments. So it was a really kind of a creative thing how it would go from different types of segments. There was all different directors like their take on what the like the challenges would look like and things like that. But it was a really cool, fun movie. Like I said, I don't know how I had never seen this movie before. The Dungeon Masters one, but like I said. Both these look really good on Blu-ray, and The Dungeon Master is worth it alone just for that one because that's a really fun movie. The next one is another one I had never seen before. You know, this has Virginia Madison in it, um, and it's Paul Figg, you know, who was the director of, you know, the upcoming Ghostbusters movie and was, you know, acted in 
heavyweights and he directed Bridesmaids and things like that. He's in this movie as well, but his character kind of vanishes in the movie. Like, I don't know what happened to his character. If he, like, left the movie or something, but he's, like, in the movie and then he's gone from the movie. But the movie's basically about Virginia, Virginia Madison, who's, you know, from the Candyman films. I always think of her. She's going to be in Joy coming up. And the movie's basically about she goes to this really, like, like preppy kind of school. I think it's supposed to be a high school, but they all definitely look like college age. But I, I'm pretty certain it's supposed to be high school, even though it doesn't seem that way. But it basically goes to this, you know, prep school that was originally an all-boys school, but they've started to allow people, you know, girls to start coming in there. So she's like some of the first of the girls that are allowed to go to this school. And the movie is kind of like the movie uh, Disturbing Behavior. It kind of like took from this movie a little bit because it's a similar kind of idea to what this movie was. This movie was way before Disturbing Behavior. But the movie's basically, though, she goes to the school, starts noticing that there's something weird about the students at the school. They're all acting weird. Like her friends that are kind of like rebels and things like that all of a sudden like kind of vanish and then they come back and they're kind of acting really weird and kind of like, Oh well, I think we should do this. Like I said, just like with this like disturbing behavior, where they you know they come back and then the one guy's differently. Like Nick Stahl's character comes back as different. It's like that same kind of vibe. It's like something's going on. The school is doing some kind of a weird thing going on. I really love the end of this movie too. It's like really ridiculous the way things go at the end of this movie. I really like this. Like it's one of the, it was a movie too that was made um, as like a student project because it was like all they used all students from the film production program at the at the college that they film this at so it's kind of interesting like I think everybody on the crew was besides the actors like everybody you know, they talk about it inside of the case talking about it but I think besides you know the actors and the director I think every and some of the producers I think everybody involved in it was students of the school but a really cool like I said lesser known one now this one is a movie that I had heard so many people talking about this this is from Image and, you know, I really wanted to see this, and I heard it was kind of like Ravenous, which was one of my all-time favorite movies. This is Kurt Russell with Patrick Wilson, Matthew Fox, and Richard Jennings, who's really different in this. He plays a really different type of role. This is called Bone Tomahawk, and this is a really cool movie. And Kurt Russell kind of has his look like this, because he filmed this, I think, like a couple months before he did, you know, The Hateful Eight, so his kind of mustache was starting to come in a little bit, because it was like right before that, you know, he was getting ready to shoot that movie. But so basically, though, the movie's about, it's a Western movie, but a super gory Western movie about um, these Native Americans who basically, in the beginning of the movie, too, I want to mention, too, Sid Haig is in the movie, in the very beginning of the movie, and it's a really cool scene in this movie, and him with, um, you know, David Arquette, like, is these kind of criminals, they're out there on the Indian burial ground, messing around, and you see something happens to Sid Haig, and then David Arquette kind of runs off. And the Native Americans kind of follow him to the town, you know, where, you know, Richard, where, um, you know, Kurt Russell is, is the sheriff. And basically, though, um, Patrick Wilson's wife gets abducted by the Native Americans, taken to their land, and they end up kind of surf, having a search party of going out there and trying to find them. And the movie, in the very beginning of the movie, it, it takes a little bit of time to get really going. Then the last half of the movie gets so, so cool. Like, it really gets to be a really cool movie and definitely has the kind of ravenous kind of vibe to it with the kind of humor and things like that mixed in with it. But a really, really cool movie. And when it gets to, like, when they get to where they're trying to go to, it gets, like I said, it gets really cool what it's like and what's going on there. And it also, like I said, it's a super gory movie. Has on here The Making of Bone Tomahawk, uh, Deleted Scenes, uh, Q&A at Fantastic Fest with the cast and crew. But I would give this one one of my top recommendations. Very cool movie. Uh, the next one from Sony is, you know, the movie called The Perfect Guy. And this is one I was actually interested in seeing. It was kind of like um, the other movie that they did, No Good Deed, a little bit. Because it kind of, from the trailer, it kind of looked like it was going to be the same kind of movie a little bit. The movie's basically about the one character who's, she ends up breaking up with her boyfriend because he doesn't really want to get serious. She really wants to have a kid. She's getting older and is kind of worried that she's going to be too late to have a kid if she doesn't have a kid soon. He doesn't really, you know, and he's playing with Morris Chestnut, you know, really wants to, doesn't really want to do that, and they end up breaking up because of it. She ends up meeting a new guy who seems like he's totally perfect. He seems like a really nice person. And then little by little, she, like something happens one night, and she realizes that he's a really crazy person. And she doesn't want anything to do with him. And when she ends up wanting to leave him, it's basically the repercussions of her leaving him and what he does. And he becomes super stalkerish. And the terrible, crazy things that start going on from his stalker's behavior kind of has that vibe of like single white female a little bit to it. That kind of like stalker kind of vibe movie to it. 
I thought it was actually pretty cool. Uh, it has on here a behind-the-scenes look on the movie and interviews as well. Um, and that's essentially what the you know the plot of his movie. But I thought it was actually pretty cool. I mean, the next one from Sony as well is like a faith-based film called War Room. This movie did really well at the box office. I was interested in seeing this. Not really religious myself, but was just interested in actually checking this one out. And it was actually a really good story. That, you know, and, and that's what I judge movies on as a story. If I'm interested in it, it keeps me interested. And the movie's basically, though, about this couple who is having... Uh, she's basically, you know worried that her husband is cheating her. She's a real estate agent that goes around, you know, trying to sell houses and things like that. And she's very worried that her husband, who's going around working for a pharmaceutical company, is like cheating on her. And they kind of are having all these arguments and having all kinds of issues with each other. And the one day she ends up going to this house that she's going to try and sell, and she meets this old woman there who basically, they kind of become friends and start talking about things. And, and one thing comes up and she kind of starts talking about her marriage and how She's worried about what's going on, and she's worried about him cheating, and all their kind of problems going on, and things like that. And she basically says about how she has this room, which is called the war room, and she basically puts up like Bible things and things like that in there for each thing in her life that are kind of problematic and stuff like that, and says that this can help. It's basically like her trying to put these things into effect and changing around her life and trying to hopefully, you know, have her life get changed. And like I said, you know, for what this was, I actually thought this was a really well-made movie. And definitely, like a, like a, to me, they really got more budget and things like that than some of their last movies, like Fireproof and things like that. Has on here, though, bloopers, outtakes, the making of a scene, commentary track, uh, deleted scenes, a whole bunch of different stuff on here. The making of War Room, auditioning to acting, a whole bunch of different features on here. Now, the next one is really cool set from Sony. This is Monty Python and the Holy Grail. This is a limited edition Blu-ray castle box set. And this is a very cool, fun set of this. And like I'm going to show you guys a little bit what it looks like. It basically opens it up like this. And you can see and it actually has up here little like farm animals and things like that that you can put on the top of this. Like put them up here and like stick them to this. And then it opens up like this. A little look inside. And then you take it out. opens like this. And then in here move this like that. In here is the DVD inside. And you know, if you guys haven't seen Monty Python, also you can put it together in a certain way where it has like a bridge coming out of the back with the animals coming out of it. But if you haven't seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail, it's basically though kind of like a weird, their kind of take on a Knights movie, but like it's all like a total spoof of, of Knights movies and things like that. It's about these group of these, uh, the king going on his adventure to try and find the Holy Grail and trying to find a certain thing. And he's kind of trying to recruit people to go along on his journey with him to find this. And it's kind of all the weird kind of situations that happen to them, like when they're fighting this one night and all his arms and legs and everything gets cut off and he still is fighting. It's like all kinds of one weird segment after another and weird musical numbers and things like that. I like this movie. My favorite. Mighty Python thing is definitely tied between this and Meaning of Life. Both of them I really like a lot. This one I think is probably the most known Monty Python movie of all of them. At least the most spoken of one. But really cool, you know, great transfer on this. A whole bunch of different features and stuff like that on this. Has on here though a new 30 minute uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail Q&A. Outtakes into slightly extended scenes. Uh, Lego Knights, the Knights of the Round Table in Lego form. Special Japanese version. A whole ton of different stuff on this. But this is like I said, this is also available on a single one where it's just the disc itself but this is actually like I said a really cool addition of that in this kind of castle type set that is like that with the little animals you can put on the bridge that can come out of the back of it but if you guys are interested in the movie though there's a very like I said a cool set I've seen it set in like uh, I think it's in Barnes and Noble and a couple other places otherwise you can definitely get this online now the next one and this is from the director of Magic Magic which I really liked and um, he also directed Girl with the, the movie with the Crystal Fairy with you know Michael Cera was in that as well and I, I this one what I didn't like that this one as much as I like both of those movies but it still was a cool movie it's basically about Kristen Wiig and she's friends with this this gay couple who are trying to have to, you know you know want to have a kid and. They're trying to, you know, get Kristen Wiig's character pregnant by artificial insemination, and they're kind of having all kinds of problems. The one guy, you know, has a really low sperm count and has all kinds of issues with it, and then the boyfriend wants to go and, you know, do it, but then he kind of is worried about the whole thing, and just and he's not sure if he wants to commit to doing it. At the same time, the guy's trying to put together this art piece this, on a baby about, because he's like, since they're trying to get, she's trying to get pregnant, it's kind of him trying to put together this kind of show about him as a baby and pictures of him as a baby and these kind of art pieces and things like that that are going on. But then at the same time, too, in the neighborhood, um, there's this 
oh, this guy who's, like, making all this noise, and he's always, like, you know, mowing his lawn and blowing leaves around and stuff in the middle of the morning, and it's kind of this, all this confrontation and stuff like that going along with them getting real pissed off with this guy. I don't know, and it takes crazy turns in this movie. It's a, it's like, it's a very strange movie, but I, like I said, I like the director's other movies, and this is still a cool movie, but it's not as, not as interesting to me as, like I said, the, the Crystal Fairy one and especially Magic Magic, which, you know, Magic Magic was not a perfect movie either, but I love Juno Temple, and I like Michael Cera a lot. I just I like the story to that one a lot. Uh, the next one from Paramount, you know, CBS Paramount, is the TV series Zoo Season 1, and this is pretty cool. The one guy in this is in, like, Pan, and he was in the um, Jack Reacher, and a bunch of different... He's a character actor. I really like that guy. He's in this as a big part in the show. It's basically, though, about something that's going on with the... It, uh, with uh, animals, and the animals are kind of starting to turn on people, and it's kind of set in different areas, it's set in Africa, set at the zoo, you know, in America, set in other states, and the, basically, though, the animals are kind of going crazy and attacking people and killing people. It's all these kind of attacks going on. It's kind of like that one movie, The Day of the Animals, the one when all the animals are kind of going around and killing people, and it's basically, though, the guy who works in, in, in Africa is basically in like a kind of a protection area for the animals. He's kind of going around and trying to figure out what it is and going to different spots and trying to figure out what it is that's making these animals do this. Is it something to do with the food they're eating, with this kind of this company? Does the food that, from this company that they're giving these animals have something to do with it? And it just kind of cuts to different characters trying to figure out what is going on with this and all the kind of issues and things like that are going on with these animals. It's a pretty cool show, though. It has on here uh, Zoo Unleashed, Creating Season 1, Dress to Kill, Visceral Effects of the Zoo, uh, Zoo at Comic-Con, The Animals of Zoo, Gag Reel, Deleted Scenes. But it's, it's a pretty good production values, too, because it's in a lot of different areas and a lot of different effects and things like that of the animals and stuff going crazy. The next one... From Anchor Bay. This is the Canadian edition. This is not released in the U.S., but it's you know it's a region, you know A disc because Canada is region A as well. So it's you can import this edition. Uh, this is basically you know Black Christmas, the seasons grie you know grievings edition. Really great cover on this one. Like, I love the cover on this. And this is the this has been released before from like a kind of a weird company that released before. And the other edition too, I believe, was a Canadian release as well. But this one is from Anchor Bay, and this one has. All the old features from the original one, but has on here Billy's watching a commentary track, documentary on the making of, you know, black of the documentary the Black Christmas Legacy, uh, 40th anniversary from Fan Expo, uh, and then has a little mini Rue Morgue magazine in here, which is kind of cool, like a shrunk down, you know, Rue Morgue, the actual magazine, you know, the article that was in the magazine for Black Christmas. But if you guys haven't seen the movie, it's directed by Dick, um, you know, from Bob from Bob Clark, who directed. Um, you know, Christmas Story, famous for Christmas Story, uh, Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. I uh, really love his movies. You know, he passed away, too, because it's him and his son. I always, it's always depressing because he was getting ready to make the new uh, Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things remake, and I was really looking forward to that, and then a drunk driver hit them. So I always get really depressed when I think back to his movies because of what happened, and just the whole thing that, that happened like that because it was, it was just in the midst of, like, getting to do all these new things because I really have been a fan of the director's stuff. But this movie's basically called, you know, Black Christmas, like I said. And it's famous, too, because it's like one of the first slasher movies. It was before Friday the 13th, before, you know, all... It was really, really early, this type of movie. And um, it's basically about girls who are at a sorority, and they're getting these obscene calls from somebody. And you see in the beginning of the movie, somebody sneaking into the, you know, sorority house. And then they, the girls start to get these calls. It's like, yeah, Billy! And it's these crazy, obscene, really dirty, terrible phone calls that they're getting. And people around the sorority are starting to get killed off and like there wouldn't be shows like Scream Queens and things like that if this movie didn't exist. But it's basically though them getting killed off and people getting killed off and the famous scene of this is with the girl who's strangled upstairs with a bag on her head in the attic. Like I remember the old VHS cover. Love that image. It was a really creepy image. But it's a really cool movie. Um, really love this movie. It's a, like I said one of the coolest slasher movies. Like I said one of the earliest slasher movies. Great transfer on this and too if you want to see like the director who did Christmas Story you want to see his dark take on Christmas. Watch this one. Uh, the next one is the Walking Dead spin-off series called, this is from Anchor Bay as well, and it's called Fear the Walking Dead, the complete first season, and there's going to be a second season that's coming in 2016, but the show is basically 
you know, I, and the thing I like was this. I really had only seen selective episodes of the first season of the show, and I really was getting into this. I watched through quite a few of these and really thought this was a pretty cool show. That basically the plot of this though is, you know, it's it's more of like a character piece though, following around this family. The one son has had like addiction to heroin and drugs, and they recently just discovered him, you know, ranting and raving, and he saw something happen to his girlfriend, and she was going crazy, and he ended up having to run away from her. And there's something he saw something had happened to her, and basically though he goes back to his family. They're trying to wean him off the drugs and trying to get him under control. And at the same time, things are starting to go on and people are starting to change and there's stuff going on. It's basically though the origins of the Walking Dead whole thing with the zombies coming and the whole family basically. What are they going to do? Where are they going to hide when this is all kind of happening to them? It's all set in LA unlike with the sh you know Walking Dead which is all kind of in the country and country kind of areas in the woods and stuff like that. This is all set in Los Angeles so it's kind of cool different kind of take on the whole thing. Has on here I look at the series and inside uh, the characters the fear of Walking Dead but this, like I said this is a pretty cool series. Um, it's like I said, it's very different than the other one, at least from what I've seen. Uh, the next one from Full Moon, and I like these movies. This is not the best of the Transfers films, but I really liked, you know, Tim Thomerson in these films, and this is called Transfers 3, and this is, you know, from Full Moon, Blu-ray of this. And it's basically, though, Jack Death's character, and he's kind of going, I'm trying to remember exactly what happens. He goes to a, he's basically, his life is, he's in the 1990s, and then, Though, you know, the character comes and basically brings him back to the kind of the corporate area where they were, you know, people who sent him and says that he has to go back to, the, I said, well, what year? He's going to a different type of year. And then, because Jack Death is not in this movie as much as I was hoping. Because like, they kind of, he didn't have all the action and stuff like that in this. It was kind of weird how it was kind of like him, he was in the whole movie, but like he wasn't doing a lot of what was going on. But he gets taken to another time trying to kind of, Kind of like with Terminator trying to stop, take down the whole corporation, and him going there and trying to do this, and it's kind of basically just him trying to stop this operation. And in the was in like 1994, no, was it two, no 2005? No, he goes to 2005. Uh, it's like I said, it's, these are kind of confusing to explain in movies. I don't know why they are, but they are. And Helen Hunt, this is about the end of when Helen when Helen Hunt was just about to really get popular. So I think this is the last one that she did of these films. But she really, you know, you can really see that she was going to go on when you watch these movies because she was really, really good in these movies. But this has a really good transfer. Like I said, this is not the best of the Transfers films. I really like the second one the best. But it was still a cool movie, though. And this, like I said, this Transfers 3. And the next one from Art Stone Distribution. This is one that I, I always was interested in seeing this because I always saw the guy, the character for this movie, dressed like this, going around, you know, Monster Palooza, the convention, you know, and in you know, Burbank. I used to always see him dressed like this. And I've seen him pretty much every time. So I was always kind of wondering what this movie was and kind of wanted to see this. And it has stars Michelle, you know, Miska Barton, Drake Bell, uh, Dave Bartista, you know, Danny Trejo, Andy Dick. And the movie's basically, you know, Andy Dick is the voice of the killer in this movie. It's basically, though, the guy is this killer, voiced by Andy Dick, going, Oh, well, we should be killing off these people. We should get it. And he basically does kind of, the one thing I want to say, too, is it has great music. They had even had music in here from Divine, like that Think You're a Man But You're Only a Boy. Like I couldn't believe some of the songs. They actually had like a lot of like eighties type songs. I don't know if they were like mimicked ones or maybe like they weren't that known, but they seemed like they were known. Like I feel like a lot of the budget was gonna go to these songs that they had. But the movie's basically though this killer who's basically going around kidnapping reality stars and taking them to his like kind of basement and filming them and broadcasting on the web and it's one of those movies though you could kind of tell though they kind of had people for a certain amount of days and they kind of spread them out in certain ways and you could tell too like I feel like certain things might have not been finished I mean they're finished but not finished perfectly to the point where it's totally cohesive with some of what was going on I liked aspects of it I really did like I, I, I liked you know Miska Barton, and I liked the basic concept of it, but there, it's hard to say what it is, because it was kind of like show the characters like Drake Bell as like the pop star kind of playing like a Justin Bieber type. Danny Trejo was playing like the drug dealers, and they kind of spread throughout the movie, and it's kind of like, almost like vignettes of the characters in different spots coming together a little bit. 
and it has on here though a deleted scene, um, you know, a feature commentary on it. But I actually, like I said, the coolest aspects of this movie was the, the soundtrack and some of the shots and some of just what was going on. Like I thought the killer was actually pretty cool, and like I, I thought like the concept was pretty cool. Some of it, like I said, wasn't executed perfectly, but I would I would say though it's worth watching though at least at least checking out. And next one from Wild Eye releasing, and this is from their Raw line, which is like kind of their shot on video kind of line of movies. This is called you know Star Soapy Dean and Sadistic Eroticism. This we actually, for one reason or another, I, I didn't end up doing it, neither did Brendan, but me and Wet, we were originally going to be in this movie, I was going to be the janitor, and Brendan was going to be the principal, so it would be kind of interesting to see it, because Brendan's character would have been like in his underpants the whole movie, and it was a really weird scenes, but for one, one reason or another, we decided not to do the movie, but the movie's basically... Like I said, it's all shot on video. It's actually shot on real VHS cameras. A lot of people I know are friends with her in this movie. James Colin Bursack is in this movie. Uh, Doug Waugh. A number of different people. So it was actually cool to see that for that reason. I will say, though, the movie is so long, though. It's like 2 hours and 30 minutes. It should have been trim, trimmed down, way down. That's the biggest thing was I don't know how they ended up deciding to cut it as long as they did. Like, it probably should have been like... 80 minutes or so is all it should have been and just kind of keep the best stuff in it and then have like a bunch of deleted scenes but it actually has on here a making of but it's uh, you know really cool making of though the movie though basically is about a group of these kids at a school and it's kind of these they're definitely a very trauma vibe some really out there things going on at the school and some crazy weird stuff and it's definitely got weird trauma kind of vibes to it and um, it definitely too does feel like an 80s shot on video with the music and everything but a new teacher ends up coming in because the one teacher ends up dying for one reason or another what happens to her and she ends up dying and then the new teacher comes in there and she has these plans of you know seducing the guys and bringing in the girls and sucking their blood and all, all these kind of crazy stuff going on but it's a really weird out there movie that's a fun one too like it was fun to me just to see too you know what the movie was like and the last one is from Synapse Films. This is the Kurt McDowell film Thundercrack. And this is one I was really interested in seeing because like I was reading about it and it sounded like a strange movie, yeah, like a really out there film. It has on here too a documentary. which is a cool documentary. John Waters in this. It's talking about these two twin brothers who make these really odd, and they've been making it for years and years and years, experimental like underground films and following around with making his movies and talking about them, talking to the actors in them. That was a really cool feature on this. But the movie is basically... Um, it's about people that go, it's kind of like the, the haunted house kind of movies with like the, the hammer horror kind of ones, but mixed with an adult film and like these, like these out there adult scenes and stuff like that. So it's definitely a movie for more adults for sure. Definitely an adult film. But, you know, basically though, these people who, you know, in this rainstorm, their cars are breaking down, these couple of different, two different groups of people end up getting into this house. And when they end up getting into the house, it's kind of like these weird encounters and weird stuff that are going on in here. Like kind of has like a like shot like Spider Baby a little bit, but like these weird, definitely a real art house underground film. Very, very strange out there movie. It has on here though, uh, rare interviews, short films, audition footage, outtakes. But if you want to see a really weird out there kind of adult film that you probably have not not heard of check this out like i said this is the 40th anniversary edition of this one anyway though guys that's all for this dvd blu-ray update thanks again for watching subscribing and i'll see you guys later